In the War of 1812, the Revenue Marine fought alongside the Navy, just like it had done during the Quasi-War with France, although this time, the Revenue Marine had grown both quantitatively and technologically since the Quasi-War. In addition, the Navy had very few ships, most sources say between 6 to 10 vessels, and also was devoid of smooth, small, fast-sailing cutters that could capture enemy ships quickly. Thus, the need for the Revenue Marine to assist the Navy was great. For the early part of the war, the Revenue Cutters proved to be very successful in assisting the Navy as evidenced by the USS Jefferson, which captured the British trade ship the Patriot in the summer of 1812. However, as the war progressed, the powerful British Navy proved no match for the flimsy Revenue Marine and young US Navy. Even through the valor and bravery of the Cutter Men, as they came to be called, the British managed to capture several Revenue Marine vessels, including the Surveyor and the Commodore Barry. Even though the Revenue Marine encountered much loss during the war, the War of 1812 helped establish the precedent that the Revenue Marine was willing to exhibit great bravery and valor to defend America's coasts and would not easily surrender or crumple under the pressure of the enemy. In the years succeeding the War of 1812, the Revenue Marine once again resorted to its primordial role of federal law enforcement and piracy prevention. However, it became apparent that the Revenue Marine would also need to incorporate some sort of national security and protection even outside of wartime as the Navy continued to become stronger and more stable. Thus, Revenue Cutters were also assigned to protect and assist boaters and mariners who needed navigational help or needed assistance. This responsibility would eventually be transferred to the United States Life Saving Service in the late 1800s and would ultimately become the main mission of the modern Coast Guard in the years preceding World War I.